Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create modular sprite sheets as used in Battle Royale Tycoon. Let's begin. So the goal is to make our guests as unique as possible. If they all look the same, then it would look very boring, so we need some variation. One way we could do it is simply by making a lot of different sprite sheets. That would work, but it would be a lot of work making each unique sprite sheet one by one. So the better option is to have modular sprite sheets where we create the final sprite sheets from a series of base body parts. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here apply to a real game. So again, this is the sprite sheet that the animation system uses. We have a head, body, hand and foot. And here is the idle animation being played. So this is the sprite sheet and over here I have a sprite sheet with just a bunch of bodies and over here a bunch of heads. We want to create the final sprite sheet dynamically by composing it with different bodies and faces. There are some parts of the sprite sheet that don't change, so we are going to use this one as our base. It already has the hand and the foot, which we're going to leave the same for everyone. All right, so let's make some code. Create a new C Sharp script for a simple game handler. So over here, first of all, we're going to need some serialized fields for a private texture 2D for our base texture. Then we're also going to have one for the head texture and for the body texture. So let's set things up on a private void awake. First thing we need is to create a new texture 2D. This will be our texture, which will be a new texture 2D. We'll give it a width and height using the same as on the actual sprite sheet. So it's 512 by 512. For the texture format, we're going to use RGBA in order to have all colors and the alpha channel. And finally, enable bitmaps. Now inside our texture, we have two methods that we're going to use. We're going to use getPixels, which returns a flat array containing the color of each pixel. And then we're going to use setPixels, which takes an array of colors and sets the pixels on a given position. So let's first copy all of our base pixels into the newly created texture. So create a color array for the sprite sheet base pixels. And we're going to grab the base texture dot get pixels Grab the pixel starting on 0, 0 and going for 512 to 512. Then using these pixels, we're going to go into our texture dot set pixels and place them on 0, 0 width and height of 512 and give it this array. Okay, so just like that, our dynamically created texture should look exactly like our base texture. And then after we set the pixels, in order to apply the changes, we need to call texture dot apply. So let's test to see if everything is working correctly. Over here in the editor for testing, I have a quad which is using the guest material and as you can see it has no texture and next to it I have a guest game object which contains a body which again mesh render, mesh filter and contains the guest material. So let's add a serialized film for our guest material so we can change the texture inside the material. So in here the same thing for a serialized field for a private material guest material. And then when we create our texture, we can set the get material dot main texture and set the main texture to our newly created texture. Now, one more thing we need to do is in order to use get pixels and set pixels, we have to come here into our texture settings. And in here we need to enable read and write. So we need to do this for the body, the head and the base. Enable read write on all of them. Okay, so let's test and see if our sprite sheet is being correctly created. And yep, there it is. Our quad looks exactly just like our base texture, but this is displaying our dynamically instantiated texture. And the guest over here is using that same texture, and as you can see, the hands are correctly animated. So now let's add a body and a head. So first, let's just grab the first one. The head has a size of 128 by 128, so we define a color array for the head pixels. And we're going to go into the head texture and get the pixels starting on 0, 0 and going for 128 and 128. Then we place them in the correct position on the sprite sheet, so texture.setPixels. In order to view the correct coordinates, the origin for the texture is on the lower left corner. So our head is on an X of 0 and on a Y of 384. So over here we set the pixels on an X of 0, Y of 384, with a block width of 128, 128, and give it the head pixels. Now let's do the same thing for the body. And the body's on 256. Okay. So let's test and we should be able to see our guest correctly with the initial body and head. Yep, there's the head and the body being correctly placed in our sprite sheet and correctly used for the animations. Now that we can copy a single body part, we can easily randomize which body part we actually select. 
So here on the head sprite sheet, we have four different heads, so we can randomize between each of them and same thing for our bodies. So here, let's first define nint for the head index, which will be a random dot range between zero and four. And on the head pixels, each of them is separated by 128. So we do 128 multiplied by the index, and then we place it on the exact same position. So let's do the same thing for our body index. And just like that, we should be correctly using a random head and a random body. So now let's just copy this code into its own function. So we got a nice function we can call to generate a new texture, which goes through here, does the same thing. And we apply that created texture into our guest material. And now for testing, let's add a debug button. So in here, I'm going to use the CM debug class to create a button on the UI. This class is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So essentially, we're creating a debug button in order to set the random texture, which again will get a new texture every time we click it. Okay, so let's test. And yep, there's a guest with a random head and a random body. And if I click the button, there you go. Every time we are getting a random head, random body, and everything looks very unique. So we can click this and with just four heads and four bodies, you can see just how many different variations we can have. The game is out now on Steam, so check it out to see what I'm teaching here apply to a real game. So there you have it. We created a new unique texture by combining a random body and head. In the next video, we're going to dynamically create our head sprites with a random beard and hair. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.